I'm going to uh, today set up my Wave 3 heater and put it out in my bus. Alright, so I'll go over a, a couple things real quick and uh, I'll post a link to a video I'm going to mention uh, down below in the description. But if I can't find it, look for Cheap RV Living. And he does a much better review as far as the differences why he chose the Wave 3 versus some of the other heaters. Uh, based on his experience with them and the cold areas that he's lived in, uh, that's why I chose the Wave 3. Now, I don't intend on living in a lot of cold areas when I'm in the RV. Uh, however, right now, I am working on the bus. And uh, the heat I have is a, a quartz infrared heater. It's just radiant heat. And it's just enough to take, you know, maybe a few degrees off. This is one of my helpers. This is Sherlock, who you've probably seen in previous videos. He is not camera shy. Patty is very camera shy. So every now and then you will see him. And these are my basic components that I have. I have the leg stand. Uh, these are wall mountable. I have the hose and regulator here. And I have a couple of, the reason I have this is that the propane tank uh, will also be hooked up to my, uh, whatever I use for cooking, once I get that set up. But for today, I will not be using that. Uh, one of the things about like the Wave 3 and some other similar types of heaters, uh, it does not require any electricity, so that's another reason I'm choosing it. Uh, it is radiant heat, there's no fan. Uh, it uses propane. Uh, I will at some point see how efficient that's going to be. Uh, another reason that I'm choosing this is that uh, when I'm going to be in my bus that's converting over to an RV, I had contemplated some type of RV furnace. However, those are great because there's a lot less moisture. But the drawback is, is you really need, really need to have you really need to have some kind of sure power, or I'm thinking. A really big battery bank if you have solar power because I know at least in one or two videos people talk about the fans being a heavy draw on the solar power now with these types of heaters the drawback is uh, they can and do produce more moisture than a traditional furnace in an RV uh, and you will also have to make sure you have proper ventilation so before I actually set this up in my RV there's going to be some directions I'll need to go through because there will be clearances on both the front sides and top that are very important. No clearance on the back because I know it can be wall mountable. Alright, so here's the Wave 3 catalytic heater. Uh, now, I've only watched a few videos on this, so I would recommend doing your own research, making your own choice. Uh, I know that there's a different way these work than some of the other uh, propane heaters. Now, it does come with a wall template, so you can determine where you're going to pre-drill to put some wood screws in to hold that up. It does have on the back where you can wall mount it uh, on the front starter hose connection uh, this will be start this is off low and high so there's two settings all right well here's the uh the bus i am converting and uh i gotta make sure that i have my proper ventilation uh this eventually will be mounted in here probably on a wall in that location there so what I'm going to do next, show you the temperature, and let's see, if you can see it, it's about 14.7 right, degrees. Alright, so I've got my camera zoomed in. I'm not sure how well this zoom uh, is going to work on this. And so again, uh, always well check for leaks as well. 
follow the instructions which I did on here to make sure this is properly tightened at the uh, the connection to the heater to your propane tank uh, I cannot stress enough read these directions this is something you you don't want to play around with your life your life is not worth risking missing a step so I'm gonna look at these again we're gonna get this going So essentially, turn the heater control knob to start off position, which it already is. Gas supply is turned on and available. Depress the knob and hold firmly for 10 seconds. This will allow gas to flow lines and will remove air from the gas. You should hear gas flowing to the heater. Uh, this is only needed the first time. Again, read the directions. I cannot stress that enough when it comes to the safety of your life. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press this starting at lighting because there's a, um, a little igniter down here and once this is lit I have to hold this in for 45 to 60 seconds then run this at the uh, highest setting for at least 10 minutes all right the flame is on right, at 30 seconds I can see some red starting on the pad here all right, so I should be able to turn this to the highest setting. Before this gets too hot, I want to zoom in here so you can see that flame starting. I can already feel the heat coming out in the front. And right now it's 17.6 degrees. Because I have cats, I will be setting this bus up so they can run around in here. This is, of course, going to be my natural living space. But my expectation is to have a wall that will come out to even to the steps here. My door will be here. And I'm hoping to come out even just a little bit more here and here to give myself some kind of storage space on the inside here. I'm only going to need this front area for driving. All right, it's been about an hour. And right now the, uh, the temperature is up to about 32.2. Uh, Keep in mind, this is not even properly insulated yet. Mm -hmm. 